Hello everyone. Uh, today I'll go with the project TinyDB, which is an actual uh, toy database which covers uh, concepts like query engine, uh, parser, SQL parser, and to some extent storage engine as well. So uh, the before we start uh, going into the code, uh, I'll give you a brief. Uh, demo of what the project is so uh, i'll quickly run this source code all right so mm. well now you see the command line interface for the any db so let's start by creating a table called t2 which contains two columns a and b a is of type int and b is of type var care and the length is 9 so now we have created a table all right so now let's create an index on top of a for the table t2 so now we have created the index now let's start with the insertion of records into the table d2 so we have inserted record one record two so the first record is basically one and alice and second record is two and bob so you inserted two records so now when we display a and b from d2 really it should show two records yeah it's showing two records and then uh, we also support where condition with equality so i'll just do a quick demo so here you can see that uh, uh, for this particular uh, condition where a equal to one we only see alice and also you can see that index on a is being used so since the where operation uh, involved a uh, indexed column which is a and we already created an index on a so basically in the query plan we used a for uh, doing the processing and that's why it's just showing that index on a is used all right so this is the quick demo of the project and now go over the source code all right so as you can see, once the project is closed, I think, uh, yeah, as in when the project was running, the first thing that it created is a table file, which is uh, here you can see that t2.table, and then uh, all the uh, all the records, all the table files are uh, stored in TinyDB folder, and uh, we also have index index files basically we have one uh, for sorry uh, one for uh, so yeah yeah we we have created a b3 index which contains both directories and leaf and like since a was the column we have an index on a, a underscore index directory is the like naming convention for directory of the index and a underscore index uh, leaf is for the leaf of b, b plus tree and these two files are uh, i think index cat is a catalog file just saving what are the indexes within the database and also this is also kind of, uh, these two files are also acting like a catalog file where uh, you store the information about the table and also information about the columns within a table so this would be the file that tinydb persists into your disk so that like, we can guarantee the position so i think uh, if you rerun the project again you'll see all this uh, so this time when you do select a and b from t2 you see that like you have the alice and bob printed so uh, i think uh, uh, we'll cover the project in part by part uh, for the first part let's maybe focus on uh, parser and also maybe focus on the query engine 
and then uh, we'll focus on transactions for some time uh, i think transaction is yet pending uh, but yeah uh, transaction and storage engine can be covered later on so i think for the first uh, video we'll cover both uh, query engine and parser all right so uh, yeah so the project uh, overall looks like uh, having two main packages so we start with the tiny db uh, file which is like the driver file and it will go to tiny db cli dot run so essentially this cli class will have the cli uh, like the one that you saw when we executed this thing right tiny sql so it it's uh, taking a delimiter as semicolon so uh, if you enter multi-line commands and then you put a semicolon then like all those things before the semicolon will be like captured as one single sentence and then passed on to the query uh, database query engine so uh, yeah the CLA interface is basically a abstraction to uh, capture inputs from the command line and then in the utils we have something called table printer i think we have taken it directly as a reference from the stack overflow answer so uh it just prints out this uh table in the form of ascii and that's it so that's about the cli interface part and uh, now let's head over to the server so uh in the server basically it, uh any database can be kind of split into four layers the top layer being the front end so front end will be the one which uh, does the parsing of the sql query so say for example if you are having mysql then mysql will have a separate syntax and uh, dialect similarly postgres has some sort of a different dialect though on a higher level the sqls are sim similar but then like there will be some syntactical difference between the both both the two so front end is kind of the layer which abstracts all those sql parsing and uh, tokenizing and things like that and then you get a single object which can be used by query engine for further processing of the query right so front end uh, is kind of an abstraction for doing all the sql parsing and things like that all right so on a high level uh, we have a uh, i parser interface which takes uh, which has got two functions one is query command and the, there is update command so uh, essentially uh, what it does is it gives you uh, like basically if you uh, use the function query command it uh, will give you the query data information which is kind of uh, processed by the parser. I think uh, you'll get to know more about this once we go to the query engine, the usage and things like that. But then, yeah, uh, on a high level, we support two parsers in this project. One is a Derby parser, the other is a MySQL parser. So uh, I say this is not completely supporting all the syntaxes of Derby. Like uh, the project is actually derived from a a uh, project called simple db uh, and uh, uh, a simple db written by edward square and uh, in that project uh, they mentioned that uh, the simple db project is kind of a simplified version of apache derby so and that's why i just named it as derby parser so the uh, particular lecture and parser are uh, the one that's taken from the project so uh, here on a high level what happens is so say for example let's go to the query command so here you can see that uh, uh, all the keywords are being eaten by the lexer so say for example uh, let's say uh, we start with uh, since it's a query it will be of the form select a uh, list of column names from table name where depending upon the where condition and things like that so here you can see that lexer is eating the keyword select and then uh, we have the select list so select list is going to 
I treat over all the commas and uh, fetch in all the uh, column names and, uh, and then we eat the keyword from and uh, after from we have the table name and then we have the predicate condition and finally uh, we have all the details captured like table predicate and fields so with that details we will be creating this query data object so query data object is nothing but a pojo object which has got all this function uh, all these fields so you will be returning that to the end user and then a uh, uh, query engine for further processing so and that's about the query command and similar would be the case with the update command so it's just that in the update command you have a uh, match keyword to check whether it's like uh, an insert update or a, a insert delete or an update so insert delete update or a create so based on that you will decide which is the function to call and then it's similar from here on so that's about the derby uh, parser uh, mysql parser is an implementation of antler and uh, that handler uh, compiled version which was provided by sharding sphere so we have used the library uh, sharding sphere sql parser so on a high level if you see uh, we have uh, okay, let me go over this thing uh, query command okay All right, so uh, yeah, for the my uh, my SQL uh, parser, we are using the sharding sphere SQL parser version five point two So on a high level, uh, whenever we deal with uh, Antler or any compiler related uh, or parser related stuff, we are introduced to this visitor pattern. So. Uh, on a high level visitor pattern is when uh, when you have the query or the syntax tree or uh, i think in the compiler terms it's called ast abstract syntax tree uh, when you traverse through each of these tree nodes uh, you'll be invoking a visit function so whenever you visit the tree node you'll be invoking a visit function and in that visit function you can uh, write a particular action to perform say for example you want to capture that value or uh, you want to modify that value or uh, you can do that and uh, finally uh, like the visit function can be used to like extract out information which are uh, which is required for us in the case we need to extract out query data related information from the uh, sql syntax tree so that's what we are going to do here so Uh, also, if you are new to the abstraction of the AST and the Mr. Pattern and things like that, I think I have a project on uh, called Tiny Compiler which covers all these things in detail. So maybe you can go over it and uh, get a better understanding of this thing. So uh, let's now go to the query parser in MySQL parser. All right. Okay, so here you can see that uh, uh, essentially we have a constructor and uh, both these functions implemented. So constructor accepts the SQL statement. So uh, the first thing that we do is uh, we create a lexer. So lexer is uh, something that's provided by uh, Antler. So I think uh, lexer and parser are the ones that are provided by Antel and uh, sharding sphere has done some sort of a modification on the overall things but uh, 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 sorry sharding sphere has um, some modification on this ISQL statement base visitor so I think uh, they have implemented a couple of their own versions and things like that so yeah I think will not go with this in very detail but overall we are creating a lexer and a parser 
from the handler package and then we are calling uh, sql statement visitor and then finally we are calling the visit function on the uh, abstract syntax tree i think when you create this uh, you will be getting this execution context uh, yeah so you will be calling the visit function on the execution context so after you call that visit function um, you have two custom functions called get value uh, uh, yeah get value which uh, will capture the information uh, from the abstract index tree and uh, return it to the user so now it's time that we go into this get value part all right so now we are in the uh, mysql statement visitor class so on a high level uh, it is extending uh, mysql statement base visitor which is a uh, modified uh, version from sharding sphere i guess yeah i think they have added some things in their uh, lexer and parser are the ones that are provided by antler i think there is no much difference in the lexer and parser but uh, uh, yeah let's maybe skip that for now right oh. okay so in the visitor class basically we have uh, each of these individual functions so uh, visit create index visit create table visit delete all this if you see uh, are keywords within the uh, uh, within the g4 uh, handler file so uh, let's take an example say for example let's go on to the handler parser so here you can see that uh, stay SQL. So we start with the SQL statements, and SQL statements can comprise of multiple SQL statements. So let's take an SQL statement. It can be either TDL, TML, or transaction statement, or replication, and all those things. Let's take the TDL statement. So here it can be a create database, create index, and create table, and all those things. So let's take the create table one so here you can see that it's uh key create is a keyword and or replace uh yeah like let's uh take create and create table name uh or uh, maybe some sort of this thing so uh on a high level this is the create functionality and uh, if you go to the create i think it will be declared in the uh lexer as some sort of a constant so uh, lexer and parser works together so you, know, you have this lexer which kind of brings uh tokenizes the sql statement and then helps in parsing the sql statement and uh, parser uses those tokens to kind of figure out what is the next uh, keyword and uh, it's more of like a, a lexer is kind of like a sequential implementation which gives you uh next token one by one and parser is uh, more syntax specific implementation where uh, you will capture those lexer information token information and ensure uh, like make sure that that's of the form of say query uh, query sql and things like that so as i was telling uh, we have this visit create index visit create table all those are override overridden so uh, if at all we visit a create table we set the command type as command type create table so now we are uh, sure that like the sql that we have parsed is of the type create table and uh, we call the return on super create table so basically it's just going back to the uh, recursion again so uh, as in uh, going back to the actual visitor flow again all right so uh, let's take an example where we want we want to capture uh, uh projection so uh, projections generally means a list of column names so uh, whenever we hit the visit projection we have a list of column names uh, you can use this uh, uh, select field is just a list of strings so we'll be adding that uh column names into the select 
uh, fields list right and finally we'll be going back to the super function so on a high level how do you figure out which is the uh, which is the particular uh, visit function that you should invoke so uh, we can start by typing visit and uh, say for example if you want to have a, a syntax uh, uh, like have a function to capture the uh, acl type or aggregate function information and alias information and things like that you can uh, override that override that function and capture the particular information in this part also uh, uh, Mm. Let me just figure that out. I think. All right. So, uh, if you want to find out, like, uh, which is that particular uh thing that you need to override and. Create the function of. Uh, in the test cases, we have a uh, sample test case for like uh, say if you want to see how the abstract syntax tree of select statement would look like. So I'm just printing that out. So here you can see that we have execute and then we have select query expression and uh, uh, the query specification starts with the select. And then we have the projection. Projection will continue until you see that uh, we have a as one projection parameter b as the next projection parameter and c as the next projection parameter and uh, similarly you will have all the information that you need for like, say for example this is the table name and all those information can be uh, captured with uh, this test case so here what we are doing is uh, we are using the uh, lexer and parser and then finally we are creating an execution context by running uh, parser not execute and after that we are passing that uh, passing that execute to the visit function also uh, we are printing the uh, printing the particular uh, uh, execute context so in this thing you see that execute or two string tree right so you are printing that out so that now uh, you can see all the uh, uh, path that it has covered in within the sql statement tree all right so yeah with that and by doing a trial and error on overriding the function you will be able to figure out which is the uh, function you need to write to kind of capture this information so as i just told you uh, when you override this visit projection in the context you will receive only a specific set subset of the information that you need for uh, parsing uh, capturing the con uh, column names so you can use context dot expression dot get and you'll be able to figure out uh, what is the required thing by looking at the uh, expression tree and uh, finally after all the visits are done uh, we can call say get value function so once all the uh, at once the query completes all the visit procedures visit functions uh, we have captured all the query inform uh, we have captured all the data within the SQL. Now uh, for each of those uh, cases we can create a query data, delete data, create index data and finally we can add that to the DTO and then return it back to the user. So this is kind of an high level overview of what it is uh, doing in the front end. So, uh, let me go back. Yeah, so, yeah uh, domain is basically uh, so A, B, C, D, it's just for ordering the items 
based on ordering the class based on their like uh, uh, precedence so predicate is the topmost class which contains terms and terms will contain expression expression will contain constant so bcd is just used to uh, make that ordering and similarly if you see abcd is used in this case as well so we start off with the front end front end is the one that passes the sql and gives you a query vector data or uh, insert data uh, and things like that and then it's get it gets passed on to the query engine we'll cover that soon so uh, and then we have a key value store which is kind of responsible for transactions and things like that and then finally we have a storage engine which is responsible for persisting data to the disk and uh, providing an api for getting a value deleting a value basically crud operations with the scan all right so now let's go over to the query engine so similar to parser uh, which is like having derby parser from the simple db project and mysql parser from the antler and sharding sphere project we have uh, implemented query engine in two forms one is uh, supporting calci the other is a naive implementation based out of simple db so here also you can see that uh, we have do query do update and finally close so do query accepts the sql string do update also accepts the sql string and then do close finally closes the query engine so let's start off with the basic query engine so in the implementation as you can see it is two back uh, two uh, two of this basic and can say all right so uh, here's the basic query engine mm. so on a high level a query engine will comprise of metadata manager a planner and a file manager all right uh, i think in the later stage um, we'll add the transaction manager and concurrency manager and things like that but uh, for the simplicity uh, currently we only have a file manager metadata manager and uh, planner so uh, here you can see that uh, uh, the do query what it does is basically it, uh, uh, creates a transaction uh, it passes the transaction along with the sql to the planner planner opens up a record scan so uh, record scan is uh, as you can see it's a read only record scan so ro record scan means that it's a read only record scan so for query we only need a read only record scan and uh, uh, from the p dot schema dot uh, like from the planner dot schema dot fields you are ca capturing all the column names and uh, finally what this part does is it just prints out the uh, column name along with the value and uh, well create a uh, sorry it doesn't print out the value but it just iterates over the uh, entries in the scan and uh, creates a row based out of the column so basically you create a row which contains list of string and uh, uh, for each of the uh each of the field you call s dot get field and then you create a string uh so basically you can use any data uh, i think you can use string data type because you are just finally outputting it in the screen so uh yeah this this part is just for iterating through the records and then finally uh once you have the rows you are just returning back a table detail so this table detail will be used in the uh table printer for printing out the uh, ascii table so so that's on like that's on a high level what do query does and then do update is basically uh somewhat similar so we pass the uh sql statement to the planner along with the transaction and then finally we check if how many columns are impacted by the transaction and things like that 
so uh so as you can see most of the action happens in the planner so next thing what we'll do is we'll go into the planner so in uh uh so generally there are two types of uh namings for planner it's called query optimizer in maybe postgres i guess and query planner in mysql or something like that sort so like both essentially means the same just call different terms okay so query optimizer yeah so uh sorry so the this is the thing optimize it's called as optimizer by oracle and then uh query optimizer by mysql and then query planner by postgres okay so effectively what it does is uh it gives you the most optimal way of executing the query using relational algebra say now uh, when we have relational we have relational algebra like select uh, project uh, uh, and things like that so uh, it just determines what is the order in which you should execute those relational algebra so that uh, you get the re results faster so on a high level there are two types of query optimizer uh, or sorry i think it's three so one is rule based optimizer which uh, like basically focuses on a set of rules that is defined by the user so we will be going with the rule based optimizer then there is this cost based optimizer which essentially uh, captures the cost for each of the query plan and then determines which is the best and then there is heuristic query optimizer which uh, does some heuristic analysis on the query tree and then uh, orders it in such a way that it tends to give a better uh, like good answer but it may not be the most optimal but it tends to work most of the time so in our project we have implemented rule based optimizer all right so let's go over the basic planner so here you can see that uh, uh, basically what we are doing is we are creating a parser so in this we are calling the mysql parser uh, mysql parser is an antler based parser and then we have once the parser uh, dot query command is called we get the query data we are passing that data to the create plan okay and similar is the case with the update as well so um, so uh, i think if you if you had noticed it here basically in the planner in the basic planner what we are doing is we are passing in what are the types of update and uh, query planner that we want in our basic planner so uh, here you can see that we are using better query planner we'll discuss about that soon but uh, yeah. all right so yeah a naive planner is uh, basically not having any sort of optimization so uh, this uh, it was there in the simple db project as well so basically what it does is uh, let's say let's i think in this case we are in the query planner uh, when we call the create plan what it does is it creates a table plan which is like the base plan for our execution uh, so table plan will have all the functionalities required for uh, like opening up, opening up a scan and things like that and uh, this table plan will be passed on to select plan using the predicate condition so uh, select plan will now uh, filter out all those rows which uh, match the predicate condition and finally uh, this select plan will be passed on to the project plan to ex extract out only the columns that we require so on a high level we start off with select and then we need project it so that we get the final output and for the update what we do is uh, let's take the example of insert uh, sorry sorry i think uh,
all right so uh, yeah just a point to note we are actually creating a plan in the case of query plan uh, as it involves uh, like opening up a scan and then uh, iterating over the scan to fetch in the data we are uh, in this case we are on we are creating a query plan and then returning that to the uh, query engine and then that plan is used for opening up a scan and then doing the further operation in the case of execute update we are we don't need to open up a plan because basically uh, we are not outputting any uh, uh, records uh, by opening up a scan so the final result is just an integer which just determines what is the number of rows that were modified in the operation so let's take an example of execute insert in this case so uh, we are going with the basic update planner so yeah so here you can see that uh, when we insert a record uh, we start off by creating a table plan we then open the table plan in read write uh, record scan so read write record scan means that you can modify the scan so uh, yeah uh, so once you open the scan you are uh, seeking to the insert start so uh, in seek to the insert start means that uh, it will go to the next available position for insert so uh, once it is there in the beginning of that insert position now you can start inserting to that position so uh, here you can see that you create an iterator uh yeah you here you can see that you you are creating an iterator and uh, calling the next on it so uh, yeah so uh, so yeah what what we are doing is basically we are looping through all the fields which are which we want to insert in the particular uh and uh but for the particular record so we have this data and then we are calling the data dot fields to find out all the fields which are required and then uh for each of the fields we uh call this um uh, scan dot set value and uh, for that field and the corresponding uh, what is the value in that so once uh the scan is completed we can close the scan so basically by this now by this time you have inserted the record into this thing all right so similar would be the case for executing modify so uh, you start off by opening up a table plan then you create a uh, yeah so uh one one thing to notice uh update table table name where a equal to uh, sorry update table uh update t2 set a equal to one where a equal to two all right so in that particular thing you can see that we have a equal to two as a predicate condition so what we do is we use select plan with the predicate condition to open a, a new plan which contains only the filtered uh records applicable with the predicate condition now we open it using read records uh, read write record scan so so that we can modify it and then uh, rest of the things are pretty similar so all right and uh, let's now take an example for creating a table and creating an index so creating a table uh involves updating metadata manager about the new table so we basically uh, for both create table and create index we are calling the metadata manager and then passing the information right away to that metadata manager so on a high level this is what a nav planner looks like so based on the nav planner now let's look into the rule based planner all right here the rule is basically if an index is present always use the index for better performance so let's start off with the yeah let's start off with uh, 
uh, query plan. So basically, just as previously seen, we have this create plan, and uh, now what we do is we check whether an index is there or not. So first thing what we do is we call the uh, MDM, which is metadata manager, and fetch the index information from there. So for the particular table, what are the index informations? And then uh, we iterate through the index information. Uh, we check if the particular uh, uh yeah we check if the particular uh, uh predicate is equal to the field name which is already indexed so uh in our case when we uh use the sql statement like select uh a comma b from t2 where a equal to 2 so in that case a equal to 2 is the predicate condition and a was a column which was already indexed so what we are checking is uh, whether the predicate condition matches with the fields which are there in the uh, index information stored for that particular table so if the value is not null that is if the value matches then what we do is we fetch that index information and uh, we call select with index plan so this is a little different uh, here you can see that uh, we are using select with index plan previously we used select plan so let me just verify that as you can see previously we used select plan now we are using select with index plan uh, so now we are passing on the index information as well and uh, finally uh so the thing is if index was not found definitely we'll go fall back to the select plan and then proceed with the project plan but if index was found then you can go with the index plan and uh, use that and basically after that uh, you do the similar procedure which is pass the select with index plan to the project plan and then finally return that as the output I think similar would be the case for uh, uh, update planner as well. So here you can see that uh, we have execute insert which accepts the table name and then we create the table base table. We start off by creating a read write record scan and then going to the insert position. We check whether the field name matches with the index information that we saved for that particular table. So if the index information is matching, then uh, we open the read write index scan, and uh, yeah, we I think we yeah. So let me just check this part once. All right. So, okay. So, got it. Got it. Got it. All right. So, what we do is we have something called date. So, basically, we start off by opening the read write record scan and then inserting the particular item into the. So, this record key is basically giving you the index position uh, or the record key for the uh, insert begin position and uh, 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 essentially at this moment you at this point you have already inserted the record into the data table now you just need to inform in, uh, be sure that you have also inserted the record into the index table as well so uh, that's what we are doing here basically what we are doing is opening up the index scan and inserting the record key into the index and then finally closing the index so after this you have the data which saved in the table as well as the index all right so on a high level uh, i think 
we are okay with both the planners cost base is yet to implement but uh, yeah let's go to the plan so here like previously we just saw how table plan select plan select with index plan project plan were used so uh, let's start off with the project plan uh the difference between plan and scan is kind of very subtle plan tape uh, plan is used in the context of cost so when the query engine or the query planner wants to do a projection or selection basically relational algebra uh, algebra on uh, algebra on this uh, sql context if you use plans and uh, we also have the cost associated with each of the plan so that like the query optimizer can take the best optimal route or uh, optimal uh, query plan right uh, scan is basically uh, iterate the interface or iterate the ap provided on the storage engine so uh, yeah essentially you can say that scan is just for iterating over the query engine so scan will uh, abstract out all the relational algebra related details so if the select if it was a select then select scan would be the one that does all the filtering if it's a project then project scan would be the one which does the filtering on the columns and uh, pl uh, plan is something which uses the scan and uh, also contains cost information so you can say that plan is basically scan plus cost information so here you can see that uh, what we are creating uh, so basically we are uh, starting off with a table name transaction and then uh, record value layout so uh, uh, finally uh, when we call the open function we are creating uh, yeah, fine. Uh, we are creating a scan which is heap read write uh, record scan. So, uh, essentially, heap read write record scan means uh, it's a read write record scan uh, which is capable of more uh, reading as well as writing, and uh, it is key based. Uh, so, I'll when we discuss about storage engines, we'll discuss about uh, what are the different data layout formats. So I think we have heat based layout format, uh, B3 based layout format, uh, uh, ISAM, IESAM based uh, layout format and things like that. So we have chosen heat based layout format. Heat is nothing but uh, data being persisted in the form of logs and things like that. So that's about the open function. And then we have the schema function, basically it just returns a table definition and blocks access would be the one that uh, gives you the cost associated with the particular table plan so uh, ideally it should fetch information from the statistic uh, stat manager but then that's not yet implemented properly so we saw how a table plan works now you'll see how a select plan works so it's very similar it's just that instead of uh, heap record scan you are using uh, the previous scan which was like basically uh, we pre previously saw right uh, in this example uh, we start off with table plan and then we pass this p and the plan to the select plan and then we, we uh, basically it's the chaining that's happening we start off with table plan and then we create or a decorator pattern you can say uh, we start off with the base table plan and then we pass it to the select plan and then we pass it to project plan so similar is the case uh, here also you can see that uh, basically the select plan is kind of using the previous plan and then passing it to the select uh, read write uh, record scan and select with index plan is also uh, 
so select with index plan is also kind of creating a select with uh, index record scan read only record scan and then project plan is also kind of similar to what we had seen previously so now we have covered plan in a high level sql man a stats manager is like the component which is ideally responsible for capturing the statistic information related to the table so uh, if you want to know uh, the approximate number of records in the table and if you want to have the uh, selectivity uh, selection uh, I, I forgot the name but then uh, for the cost based uh, optimizer we have this um, join selectivity or uh, selectivity as such so uh, I think stats manager is the one that's responsible for providing those kind of information we have the number of logs, number of records accessed and things like that and then finally we are going to see the SQL scans all right so um, let's start off with the select read write record scan so as i told you here uh, uh, uh the next function and so basically select just provides you the iterator pattern so uh, here you have the next function and in the next what we do is we are uh, checking whether the predicate condition is satisfied or not if it's not satisfied we terminate the next and uh, or move on to the next item and things like that oh uh, sorry i think it's not terminating the next but then yeah it is uh finding the next record which matches with the predicate condition so uh by this while loop we kind of filter out all the uh essentially we do the selection relational algebra and when you use the select using index read only record scan what you do is uh, basically uh, all right so what uh, okay so there is a a subtle difference between select using the index and select uh, record scan i think select using index will work together with select record scan because um, uh, in this select using index uh, what we essentially modify is only the next portion so uh, what we do is we uh, call the next function when we call the next function we uh, invoke the index within uh, we invoke invoke the scan of particular index and uh, we can easily capture what is the next item uh, that we need to iterate over so by using the index we can directly get the next uh, next uh, record id or record key and then move to that uh, record key so i think let's go and uh, see the planner for rule base and so we start off with the table plan we create a index with uh, select with index plan all right so what we do here is we start off with an in a record scan we also pass in the index scan and then we go to the index record scan mm -hmm. all right so i think uh we gives you i'm just wondering why is index 
just a minute. Let me just figure this out. All right, guys. So, uh, I just had an issue with the select uh, select with the index record scan, and then figured out what's happening. So basically, when we have an index, uh, the records will be in a sorted order. So if you are going for say, for example, uh, index on A, then all the uh, records with the value for a will be in the sorted order so uh, let's say in our case we had a values from 1 and 2 so both 1 and 2 will be in the sorted order uh, if we have a with like say 1 2 10 or something then all the values will be in the sorted order so in the basic query plan what we are doing is uh, we are passing in the column name and then checking whether the predicate matches with the column name if it matches then what we do is we return the column value for that predicate so uh, if we go to the equals with constant and then uh, equals with constant here you can see that uh, uh, it if it's of the time f is equal to c where f is specified field and c is some constant if so the method returns the constant if not method returns an null. so essentially we return the return value is a column value right not a column name so uh, in the select with index uh, basically what we do is we go to the uh, record scan and then create a plain heap record heap retrieve record scan rather than a select uh, with a predicate condition right select with the predicate condition scans over the entire data table and uh, applies the predicate uh, on all the records all right what we do is uh what we do in the case of index scan is uh we apply the uh, essentially we don't we did not apply we just need to go to the starting position where the constant value is equal in the index so we do some sort of a binary search and then hit the uh, starting point of the value and from there on we iterate it so that uh until the value is equal to the value uh, that we have so for example if the value is a equal to one then we iterate until uh, the records have the value as a equal to one right so in the select scan basically we start off by calling seek to query start so uh, seek to query start uh, initially calls index uh, to seek to the value that we have provided so value would be in the case uh, a equal to one right so in the case value would be one so now uh, the starting pointer of the index will be at the point where a equal to one and then uh, whenever we call hash next it will uh, go on fetch the next element and the things like that which uh, uh, yeah whenever we call hash next uh, we'll be getting the next entry which is like the record key for that index and then using the record key we call seek to record key to fetch the data from the data file so index file is a separate file data file is a separate file we use index file which is sorted order to uh, iterate over the value uh, which is a equal to one so we get all the a equal to one records uh not records the record keys and then we use those keys to fetch the data from the data record so one more thing to notice uh, that has next will go to the next item uh with the key specified in the seek so if the seek uh so basically value is the search key that we provided so has next uh, as mentioned in the uh, this thing so most of the next leaf record having the previous specified search key returns for if there is no such leaf record so you iteratively go through all the records which is having a equal to one and then fetch those, fetch those things all right so that's about the select using index record scan and then similarly project is uh, basically having this function uh, on get in and all those things basically what it does is it checks whether the field is the one that's specified in the field list if it's if it's the one that's specified in the field list well and good then uh, else we'll just uh, throw a runtime exception so 
on a high level we have now seen uh, how a table uh, how a query engine has a uh, planner plans and scans to kind of uh, do relational algebra on a set of uh, query data or uh, like sql data now since we have seen the basic query engine we'll see uh, implementation of calcite which kind of uh, goes through the similar uh, query engine part i think uh, let me just i think at this point we can take a pause we can probably cover calcite in the next session and then uh, we'll go into the storage engine and then maybe later on we'll come back to the key values too so i'll stop here